There's a database with your face in it right now. It logs your addresses, your habits, and your specific threat rating. But this database isn't owned by a government. It isn't stored on a server. And you cannot delete it. It is flying 30 feet above your head. We used to think crows were just noise. But recently, scientists fed 5,000 hours of their calls into an advanced AI. They expected to find random animal screeches. The AI didn't find noise. It found grammar. It discovered that they aren't just squawking. They are describing us. They have names for you. The AI just figured out exactly what they are planning. To understand why the AI results are so disturbing, we have to destroy a myth. The myth of the bird brain. For decades, neuroscience operated on a bias. We looked at the human cerebral cortex, the wrinkled outer layer where we do our math and philosophy, and assumed that was the only architecture for higher intelligence. Birds have smooth brains, lacking a cortex. Therefore, we assumed nobody was home. We were spectacularly wrong. In a landmark study at Vanderbilt University, neuroscientist Dr. Susanna Herculano Husel dissolved crow brains into a brain soup to count the actual number of computing units inside. The results were shocking. A crow's forebrain contains roughly 1.5 billion neurons. That's the same number found in some monkey species. But here's the terrifying efficiency of nature. The crow fits that monkey-level computing power into a brain a fraction of the size. Their neurons are smaller, packed tighter, communicating over shorter distances. Think of it like this. We're running on clunky, overheated enterprise servers from the 90s. Crows, they're running on next-generation quantum processors. This density means their brains operate at a higher critical flicker fusion rate. They process visual information faster than we do. To a crow, you are slow. You are lumbering. You're moving through molasses. They aren't just watching us, they're analyzing us in bullet time. They have the hardware for high-level intelligence, but hardware is useless without software. And that is where the story gets personal. You might have heard the stories about crows recognizing faces, but the reality of how they do it is far more insidious than just memory. We have to revisit the classic experiment by Professor John Marsloff at the University of Washington. He wanted to test if wild crows could identify individual humans. He wore a specific rubber caveman mask while trapping and tagging crows, an unpleasant but not lethal experience. When he wore a neutral mask, like a Dick Cheney mask, the crows ignored him. But when he put the caveman mask back on, chaos. The birds that had been trapped attacked him. That's expected. But then birds that had never seen him before started attacking. Months later, birds that hadn't even been born when the experiment started attacked the mask. Mars Luff returned to that campus five years later, wearing the same mask. The original birds were mostly dead. Yet the new generation immediately identified him as public enemy number one. Do you realize what that means? It's not genetic memory, it's culture. The first crows didn't just make a frightening noise, they communicated a data packet. They described the visual features of the threat, the prominent brow, the hair color of the mask, and transmitted that data to their peers and offspring. They created a wanted poster, an oral history of trauma passed down through generations. You might have a criminal record in the crow world older than your car. We knew they could communicate targets, but we assumed their language was primal, emotional bursts like a dog barking. Enter the Earth Species Project, an initiative using advanced AI to decode animal communication. They stopped treating crow sounds as noise and started treating them as data points in a high-dimensional space. When the AI analyzed thousands of hours of vocalizations, it didn't just find calls for food or hawk. It found something that shouldn't exist outside humanity. It found recursion. Recursion, the ability to embed structures within structures, the difference between saying danger and saying the man in the red hat, the one who threw rocks yesterday, is back. But this time, he's holding a shiny object. A 2022 study demonstrated that crows grasp these nested concepts. They understand grammar. If they have recursion, they don't just have signals. They have storytelling. They can communicate complex narratives about past events and future plans. The AI suggests their planning is deep. They don't just react, they strategize. They hold what look like funerals, not out of grief, but investigation. 
They gather around a body, silent, analyzing, and coding that data as a new threat warning. They have courts to punish rule breakers. They have a gift economy, trading shiny objects for protection. But the most terrifying discovery wasn't about language, it was about what happens when they aren't making any sound at all. But the crows are just the spies, the urban intelligence units. If you go deep into the wilderness, you meet their cousins. You meet the heavy infantry. You meet the ravens. If crows are feathered apes, ravens are feathered wolves. Larger, stronger, possibly smarter. While crows have mastered life around us, ravens have mastered manipulation of other species entirely. Biologists have documented a chilling alliance between ravens and wolves. In the wild, ravens act as aerial spotters. They find an injured animal, a moose, a deer, and they call out to the wolf pack. They lead the wolves to the prey. The wolves do the killing, the ravens get the leftovers. This isn't scavenging, it's biological weaponry. The ravens know it can't kill a moose. So it employs a tactical airstrike by weaponizing apex predators. They are the tool users. But their tool is a 100 pound killing machine. If they can manipulate wolves, what makes you think they aren't manipulating us? And then there are the magpies, the scientists of the family. We used to think only humans, great apes, and dolphins had self-awareness. We test this with the mirror test. If an animal sees its reflection, does it attack the other or realize, that's me? Most dogs fail, cats fail, human babies fail, until they're toddlers. Magpies pass. When they see themselves in a mirror, they groom their own feathers. They have a concept of self. They know they exist, so when we talk about this surveillance network, we aren't talking about one species, we're talking about a global coalition. The crows run the cities, the ravens rule the wilderness, the magpies hold the cognitive high ground. A diversified empire spanning every corner of the globe. And the scariest part about ravens? Unlike crows who mostly squawk, ravens can speak. They can mimic human speech. In the wild, they use it to trick predators. In captivity, they mimic the voices of their captors perfectly. Imagine walking through a forest to hear a child crying, a man shouting for help. You run toward it, but there's no person. Just a black bird sitting on a branch watching you run into the trap. They know our faces, they know our habits, and now they can sound exactly like us. The simulation isn't just watching you, it's learning how to be you. If you want to know if another being is truly conscious, you have to ask, can it imagine? Can it see things that aren't there? Professor Andreas Nieder at the University of Tübingen decided to find out. His team trained crows to signal when they saw a faint gray square flash on a screen while monitoring their neurons. Sometimes the square was there, sometimes it wasn't. When the square was there, sensory neurons fired. The bird saw it. But here's the breathtaking moment. Sometimes when there was no square, the crow still signaled it saw one. It made a mistake. But when researchers looked at the brain data, the crow's visual neurons were firing wildly. Do you see the implication? The crow wasn't seeing photons from the outside world. It was seeing a thought. It was experiencing a hallucination. It proves they have an inner eye, a conscious workspace. They aren't just reacting, they have an internal monologue they can imagine. When that crow on the power line looks at you, it's not just registering your presence, it's thinking about you. We need to stop looking at them as animals. We need to start looking at them for what the data says they are, a rival intelligence stuck in the Stone Age. Think about it. They have law, they have trade, they have education, they have warfare, organized conflicts between crows and ravens, they have language. The only thing holding them back from civilization are fire and hands. They can't smelt metal with wings, so they do the next best thing. They parasitize ours. They wait for us to build the roads that crack their nuts. They wait for us to make the coat hangers they build nests from. And they watch, oh, one last thing science tells us. Crows see in ultraviolet. To them, we don't look like this. Our skin reflects UV light in patterns we can't see. To them, we are glowing, lumbering, neon monsters. We are the titans that built their world. And they are the silent observers, taking notes, waiting for the titans to fall, and teaching their children exactly which one of us to target first.